All right, so we talked a little bit about electricity, the basics of it, and some safety. And now we're gonna go into using electricity in a controlled way um, for helping the skin, treating some skin conditions, and really making our clients look and feel good. As well as, you know, helping ourselves decide what treatments we want when we start experimenting on ourselves. So electrotherapy um, is gonna be the use of electrical currents to treat skin conditions. Uh, currents used in electrical facial and scalp treatments are called modalities. Each modality produces a different effect in the skin. An electrode, also known as a probe, is an applicator for directing electrical current from an electrotherapy device to the client's skin. It is usually made of carbon, glass, or metal. Each modality requires two electrodes, one negative and one positive, to conduct the flow of electricity through the body. The one exception to this rule is the Tesla high frequency current, which will be covered more in detail later. So some of the more old school electrical machines, they use a positive and negative rod and you usually have your clients hold one of them while you're doing the other one. That can be a pain in the butt, but it's how things were done traditionally. With the more modern devices, you don't have to worry about that. So when we talk about these different types of modalities, we're able to figure out which ones you might wanna try and which ones you can probably invest in in the future if you wanna open up a salon or work in a spa. So you have to understand how polarity works. Polarity is the negative or positive pole of an electric current. The electrodes on many electrotherapy devices have one negative charged pole and one positive charged pole. The positive electrode is called the anode. The anode is usually red and marked with a P or a plus sign. The negative electrode is called the cathode. It is usually black and marked with an N or minus sign. If the electrode's not marked, you want to ask your instructor, salon manager, or supervisor to help you determine the positive and negative poles. And they give you an example of what it will look like um, in the book. If you still are unsure and you're using this device on your own, make sure you contact the um, manufacturer, just send them a Facebook message, shoot them a DM on Instagram, and they should be able to get back to you. Um, the main modalities that you will use are going to be galvanic current, microcurrent and Tesla high frequency current. It's really only those three in cosmetology. Um, galvanic current is a constant and direct current having a positive and negative pole that produces chemical changes when it passes through tissue and fluids of the body. Galvanic current is named after Dr. Luigi Galvini. He was born in Italy and he lived there until he died in 1798. His studies were based on electrical charges and how they affect the muscles of animals and um, that helped him discover and develop the galvanic current machines that are used in salons today. This was created in the 1700s. Think of how cool that is. It's something that's been around for that long, and his studies are still relevant to what we're using now in the salon. Um, two different chemical reactions are possible at galvanic current, depending on the polarity, if it's positive or negative. You have the positive pole, the anode cataphoresis, which produces acidic reactions, closes the pores, soothes nerves, decreases blood supply, contracts blood vessels, hardens and firms tissue. And the exact opposite is done with the negative pole, the cathode and anaphoresis. The negative pole produces alkaline reactions, opens the pores, stimulates the irritated nerves, stimulates, stimulates and irritates the nerves, increases blood supply, expands the blood vessels and softens tissue. Um, Here's a caution, you do not want to use negative galvanic current on skin with broken capillaries or pustular acne conditions or on clients with high blood pressure or metal implants. If they also have a clotting disorder, I'd be caution with, cautionary with that too. The active electrode is the electrode used in the area to be treated. The inactive electrode is the opposite pole from the active electrode. The effects produced by the positive pole are the exact opposites than those produced by the negative pole, like I just discussed with that chart. Iontophoresis is the process of infusing water-soluble products into the skin with the use of electrical current, such as um, the use of positive and negative poles of a galvanic machine. Cataphoresis infuses an acidic, positive product deeper into the tissues using galvanic current from the positive pole toward the negative pole. Anaphoresis infuses alkaline negative product into the tissues from the negative pole toward the positive pole. Disincrustation is a form of anaphoresis and is a process used to soften and emulsify grease deposits, oils, and blackheads in their hair follicles. Disincrustation is frequently used to treat acne, milia, which is the small, um, they look like sesame seeds, we discuss them in the disorders of the skin, and comedomes, 
which is blackheads and whiteheads. That is what you'll use galvanic current for. Um, it's great for acne and I'm um, getting stimulation in your skin depending on what pole you're using. Um, but microcurrent, on the other hand, is an extremely low level of electricity that mirrors the body's natural, natural electrical impulses. So it's some, we also have electricity flowing through us. It's a small amount. This is very gentle. It's not gonna make you feel uncomfortable. You're not gonna feel any pain. This mirrors that to promote healing. It can be used for ion topheresis, firming, toning, and soothing skin. It can also help heal inflamed tissues such as acne. Your newer microcurrent devices have a negative and positive plurality on one probe and not two probes. So it makes it easy and the client can relax. They don't have to hold the pole. You're able to do the treatment with them just fully breathing and practicing some meditation. Microcurrent does not travel through the entire body. It serves the specific area being treated. It can be infect effective in the following ways, improving blood and lymph circulation, produces acidic and alkaline reactions, opens and closes hair follicles and pores, increases muscle tone, restores elasticity, reduces redness and inflammation, minimizes healing time for acne lesions, improves the natural protective barrier of the skin, and increases metabolism. When microcurrent is used during anti-aging treatments, it may give your client skin a firmer, softer, and more hydrated appearance. You're also going to be using an ampule, which is your serum. You're going to put that in the skin and then infuse it in like this. Um, you also want to read the caution box is that anytime you're using electricity, you should not use any kind of electric device or microcurrent on a client with a pacemaker, epilepsy, cancer, pregnancy, phlebitis, th or thrombosis. It should not be used in anyone under a physician's care for a condition that may exclude them from using certain ingredients or products or from having treatments. If you are unsure about whether it is appropriate, you wanna ask them to get a physician's note. So if a client says, oh, I just had a heart attack, you wanna say like, okay, what we're gonna do is I need to make sure you're safe because if a client has a heart issue and you're doing the impulse, there's a small but real chance they can you know, drop dead there. Or if they have their pacemaker in and you're doing the microcurrent treatment, you can actually override the um, circuit and cause it to break. And that would cause them to have, you know, die right there. You can trigger a seizure and in severe um, Cases you can potentially cause harm on someone who's pregnant. Um, we don't know that for sure, but we don't want to find out. When someone's pregnant, you really want to like make sure you're not doing anything on them that's going to be harmful, other than just a basic relaxing facial massage and something like that. Um, and you would hope that someone who's pregnant would know that if you're using electricity, it's probably not something you want to be using while you're pregnant anyway. Um, Tesla high frequency current. Um, you also want to read this. The, I think this is such a cool fact. The Tesla High Frequency Current is named after an electrical en engineer, Nikola Tesla. His family is still around, um, and they're a pretty well-known family um, in science. He was born in 1858 in Croatia. He moved to the United States in 1884, where he did the majority of the work on the alternating current. He died in New York City in 1943. He also, if I'm not mistaken, did work on perms, I think, for a while on some of the machines. I know that his um, family that is a lot like Elon Musk is, I think, um, somehow related to him, if I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I know that um, May Musk, she's a famous model who promotes like anti-aging skincare. It's pretty cool um, how the whole family is in on all these like secrets. Um, the Tesla high frequency current is also known as violet ray uh, or thermal heat producing current with a high rate of oscillation or vibration that is commonly used for scalp and facial treatments. Tesla does not um, produce muscle contractions and the effects can be either stimulating or soothing, depending on method of application. The electrodes are made from either glass, metal, and only one electrode is used to perform a service. The benefits of Tesla high frequency current is that it will stimulate blood circulation, increase elimination and absorption, increase skin metabolism, improve germicidal action, relieve skin condition, like skin congestion. Um, as you learn more about the facial treatments, you'll become more familiar with these and like, you know, the different products that you can use with this. Um, and there's some other electric, other electrical equipment you'll use. Um, you know, you'll encounter conventional hood dryers, heat lamps. These are going to be a source of dry heat that can be used to shorten chemical processing time. And I always say, um, I do personally do not prefer these. Um, because dry heat causes evaporation, they recommend covering the hair with a plastic cap. The reason why I don't believe in using heat when you're using lightener or hair color, and I'll talk about this more in detail, is that it will actually weaken the integrity of the hair. If you're gonna use anything to speed up a process, use steam heat, because it will work better, because it works through diffusion. Dry heat is not the way to go with any kind of chemicals like color, bleach, lightener. It will cause your colors to turn brassy, fall out quicker. It'll cause your lighteners to make the hair become mushy. And if your perms are not supposed to be used with, that, with a dryer, don't do it, you're gonna fry the hair off. 
um, ionic hood dryers with um, crystalline mineral and tourmaline. These are going to be um, your ionic dryers. They use tourmaline, and tourmaline will produce um, special um, negative ions. So what those do is it actually defrizzes the hair. There was a claim that they condition the hair and dry it quicker. This claim has not been proven as of yet. One of the theories is that because you're using them and it's not going to frizz the hair, it makes the hair appear like it's a lot silkier and smoother, um, as opposed to before when you would get like this like moist frizz with the old-fashioned dryers. Electrical curling and flat irons. There are so many types. Um, you know, thermal styling tools have the capacity to go up to 410 degrees. I'll actually challenge the book. I've, uh, when I worked at TJ Maxx, had someone buy a flat iron that went up to 500 degrees. That is way too hot for anyone. Um, extreme heat can cause the water in the hair to boil and can cause severe damage. Um, heating caps provide a uniform heat source and can be used with hair and scalp conditioning treatments. Hair color processing machines or accelerating machines shorten time for chemical services. Um, these process look similar to a hood dryer and dispense a hot water vapor inside the hood. A hair color service processed um, with a machine at 90 degrees Fahrenheit will provide twice as fast um, processing time. So it'll shrink the processing time um, by speeding it up by about two times. Let me read that again. We'll process twice as fast as it would at a normal room temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So what that means is that when you increase something um, to 90 degrees, you're going to speed it up to be twice as fast. That may not be a bad thing, but also might be an issue. Um, steam vaporizer provides moist, uniform heat that can be applied to the head or face. Steamers warm and cleanse the skin by increasing the flow of both oil and sweat. Some steamers may also be used for hair and scalp conditioning treatments. Um, estheticians often add essential oils to a facial steamer as part of skin therapy and it will enhance the client's general well-being. Um, most of the time you have to be really careful with this because some machines that were doing it and it was actually causing the machine to ruin. If you add essential oils to the special steamers, what could happen is it can get jammed in there and actually can cause the water to start bursting out in jets of hot water causing damage if you have it pointed at someone's face and you're going to break a good machine. So always make sure you can check with that if you can use that. Um, light therapy equipment includes lasers, light emitting diode, LED pulse light. These types of equipment are medical devices and should be used by only licensed professionals. Um, some of the t lasers you need to get either extra training in or you have to do it under the um, supervision of a physician. I know they make them, you can get them online. Um, I know that my state of Jersey is really bizarre in that it's very difficult to get certified. In Pennsylvania, it's a lot easier. Um, on the note of hair dryer processing machines, they're usually called hair color steamers. They're very specific now. Don't get them confused with the um, hood dryers, the cyclomatic dryers that like rotate like this. Those giant circular dryers, um, I think, are a waste of money because when you purchase that, um, you're going to spend a lot of money. One and two, it's not going to cause your color to go any faster. Slow and steady wins the race when you're lightening hair, and when you're coloring hair, you have to let it process naturally because if you add heat to it, you're going to get brass. So that is a little outdated. Um, you always want to be sure that you're in your state's um, you know, compliance with the uh, devices and how to use them. They also say that Tesla high frequency current should not be used in clients who are pregnant, who have epilepsy, um, asthma, high blood pressure, a sinus blockage, pacemaker, or metal implants. They sh the client should avoid contact with metal such as chair arms, jewelry, metal bobby pins. A burn may occur if contact is made. Um, people also used to believe that light traveled in straight rays, but now we know that it oscillates in wave formations called wavelengths. The word rays still remains as UV rays, UVA, UVB rays, or light rays, but it represents the term radiation because you think of something radiate it moves. Oscillation, a way of thinking of oscillation, if you have a fan and I'm pointing a fan at you and it's blowing um, you know, heat on you, Oscillation is something that's going to go like this and it's going to move. It's going to disperse. That's what oscillation is. It just doesn't go like this. Um, look at the chart right here because I think it's just so cool how it shows you the um, different wavelengths. At one side of the chart, we have radio waves, which are really long. You have microwaves, which are a little shorter. Infrared, which is eh, a little medium. Visible light is still light that we can see, but it's only one part of the spectrum. Ultraviolet light we can't see, but it starts to get thinner. X-rays are very thin, and gamma rays are super thin. It's very high-powered. Um, X-rays are used by physicians and dentists. Gamma rays are used for nuclear power plants. Ultraviolet is used for light therapy services. Um, actually, the ones that are used for therapy services are light waves, infrared light, visible light, and ultraviolet light. Um, 
one of the ways we do this, you know what, I'll give you actually, I'll give you guys an early break. I'll give you an early break because I can finish the rest of it in about like 10 minutes. So go take your break and we're gonna get right into the electromagnetic spectrum by talking about uh, light ray, not, no, I almost said the light spectrum. It's the, um, yes, the electromagnetic spectrum, but we're gonna talk about specific rays and what these lights do.